Hello everyone, welcome to this video on introduction to finite element analysis and by the way this is your uh, uh, Shankar and I am working as an assistant professor at Tiara College of Engineering Madurai, basically I am from the department of mechanical engineering, right. So in today's video we will be seeing about what is finite element analysis. So we will just dig some uh, basic uh, things on what is finite element analysis, right. Let us get into it. So any engineering design process be it a mechanical or an electronics or an electrical computer science so it, uh, it does not depend upon the department in engineering the process of design is confined to a series of steps so starting with the definition of the problem so any problem uh, anything what you want to do or what you want to build or something uh, to produce or manufacture a product it starts with the definition of the problem uh, which we get from the customers so the need of the problem so the need for the product is got so that is what is definition of the problem so then you identify your constraints uh, so like uh, time money materials and some other things right uh, then you go for brainstorming multiple solutions so uh, in always uh, in engineering there is a uh, multiple solution for any given problem so you find out the different solution that are available to solve the current problem then you find out the most best solution out of the uh, given problem a uh, given solutions given uh, multiple solution right after this there are two stages which is called as prototyping so i can find it here so it's uh, prototyping stage and the testing stage these two stages what you do uh, so far you would have identified a best possible solution for your given problem then you fabricate the product or you manufacture a sample product say one or two or three some sample pieces you manufacture so that is called as basically prototyping uh, small uh, it can also be uh, called as a small scale model of your real life problem or real life product right so you uh, do a small scale uh, manufacturing then you test the product for different conditions so different real life environments that the product is going to undergo uh, when you uh, manufacture and you produce it and commercially market it right so that is called as testing and uh, from this from the results of this testing so what you do is that uh, you iterate you try to improve your prototype so not uh, every time every first time you achieve the success so, so you have to go through multiple series of steps of failures and only then you can finally achieve your best optimized product and then you finally communicate your solution to the production floor and you start manufacturing the uh, product in large scale right now in this series so our video is confined to finite element analysis so what we are going to see is this step which is called as testing so uh, earlier uh, back around uh, 30 or 40 years uh, around when the uh, industrial engineering when the industries were uh, started to bloom around the world uh, when uh, the era of industrial engine uh, in industries so the at that time what you do is that you manufacture a sample product and you test the product for real life conditions so the testing needs lots of equipments apparatus and tools uh, you have to build uh, to test the product so it requires a lots and lots of money is involved in this prototyping and testing stage so to reduce the cost involved in this two stages after the invent of computers so after the advent of computers into these uh, modern century so what they did is that they used computers for prototyping and testing so what our video this video will be particularly talking about the finite element analysis so which is used as a tool for testing the products under various real life conditions so we'll be using this finite element analysis to do this right so we'll get on with our uh, slide next you'll, you'll be able to understand at the end of this slide what i'm uh, talking right now right okay uh, so this presentation covers so introduction to numerical method so numerical method is a mathematical tool mathematical one of the mathematical methodologies to solve an engineering problem so we'll see what is that and we'll see the introduction to finite element method so finite element analysis or finite element methodology fem or fea it's called as we'll see what is that you'll see the concept behind it we'll see the philosophy behind it right we'll some you'll see what are the practical applications of a finite element analysis and we'll see the need and advantages then we'll see what are the different softwares tools and available and we'll see how to solve a uh, problem in uh, uh, finite element analysis what are the steps involved we'll be seeing that and what are the different types of analysis that can be carried out using FA. so these are the series of uh, things that we are going to cover in this presentation right we'll move on 
basically as i was as i was talking to you to solve any kind of engineering problem so uh, to test any kind of engineering problem there are basically three methodologies so, so the first methodology is called as analytical method so it is basically the cra classical approach so you can uh, uh, expect uh, around 100 percentage accurate results but like uh, so analytical method is basically applying your theoretical knowledge uh, so you'll be having basic equations so there are various laws in each and every uh, de uh, department of engineering you know say mechanical electronics electrical whatever the say the department you'll be uh, the engineering is completely built upon some basic foundation of laws say for in mechanical engineering you'll be having uh, newton's laws and various other things upon which the engineering is built upon so using those theoretical equations you will try to solve the problems uh, but the biggest uh, disadvantage is that it is only available for some simple problems so you can't just go for some real life so real life is completely complex it is not simple in nature right so that you cannot apply the theoretical uh, problems to real life problems so i have to do lots of assumptions and uh, uh, i have to reduce the real life problem into a much simpler one only then you can go for this analytical approach the second one is that this is the experimental method so in experimental method what you can do is that uh, you'll be actually producing the product so i was talking about prototyping and testing you see so in that you'll be uh, uh, actually you'll be manufacturing the product you'll be testing uh, you'll, you can get the actual measurement in this right uh, rather than in analytical approach here you'll be finding the actual measurements uh, but the main disadvantage is it is highly expensive because uh, you need a lot of uh, equipment apparatus for this and only then you'll be able to do this uh, experimental uh, methodology so what we need is that we need a methodology which is as simple as analytical method and it should not be also as complex as experimental method and it should also give me an also give me a uh, reliable result right so for this we are going for the third methodology which is called as numerical method it is a mathematical approach and even though it does not give you 100 percentage accurate results but the results which we get from numerical method can be suitably used to uh, detect whether my product will fail or not uh, whether my product will apply to real life conditions or not so you can go for this right uh, the results cannot be blindly uh, uh, see you cannot uh, blindly depend upon this numerical method but you can always verify it with the experimental or analytical approaches but uh, it is one of the easiest methodologies to solve any engineering problem so there are different types of numerical methods right so what are those so they are finite element methodology boundary element method finite volume method and finite difference method so these are the different methods that are available under the category of numerical method to solve any engineering problem right so in particular we'll be discussing about this finite element method in this slide so the remaining method are, they are also similar to this finite element method but we'll not be going into detail to all these methods so some short description on all these methodologies are given in this slides so according to our uh, our uh, system so you can see that finite element methodology it is a very popular method based upon the discretization of components into finite number of blocks so i'll uh, discuss this in detail later so what does this discretization mean what is uh, uh, dividing the component into finite number of blocks i'll detail it in you uh, later on right as we go on with this slides right so it has a numerical application linear non-linear thermal dynamics buckling fatigue so these are some of the analysis in mechanical but apart from mechanical even finite element method is used by electronics electrical engineers uh, computer science in every robotics in every branch of engineering you can find this application for this finite element method so it is completely multidisciplinary in nature it is not only confined to mechanical but mechanical uh, they mostly use this finite element method for all their uh, problems right okay now we'll see uh, there are two things uh, as a mechanical you can find fea and fem so what is fea it's finite element analysis and fem it is finite element method so actually both are same uh, uh, people usually have this misconception that fea is different and fem is different no uh, actually both are same uh, uh, basically uh, fea is more popular in industries while uh, fem is at uh, education in academic side we'll be using the concept of fem but uh, it is not so uh, we can use uh, fea or fem both interchangeably it doesn't matter what you name it uh, basically finite element analysis that is most most popular word that we'll be using right okay before we get on with the slide so we'll see why do you think finite element method is important to solve an engineering problem in current scenario uh, so what i want you to do is stop pause the video 
then write down the answer for this question right and then you can continue with the question so i'll just give you two minutes to pause this video and then we'll continue with the slides okay let's continue i hope you would have written the answer based on what i have told you uh, i think you would have written what is this right uh, now let me tell you what is why finite element method so finite element method it was uh, discovered uh, back in uh, 18th and 19th century uh, but it was not very much popular it was one of the most least used method but until 1980 it was very least to least used methodology for solving engineering problem because uh, it takes into account lots of different equations you which you need to solve manually to get the final result right so other method the analytical and experiment method seems uh, very easier when compared with this final element method this was until 1980 right after the invention of computers right computers are something that the machines which are used to solve any kind of systems very fast so computers are very faster than humans right so after the invention of computers uh, this finite element methodology have been implemented using computers to solve the problems right so the main disadvantage of finite element method is that it takes lots of time to solve the equations that are generated by this finite element method but as the computers do does the calculation very fast what we would, what we normally do is in nowadays what we are doing is that we take this finite element method equations we use computers to solve and just we get the results so we just feed in the problem the computer solve it and you get the result so it is a very much simpler and that after the invention of computers this finite element method became very popular in industries to solve the problem you can find the some of the uh, images that i have given uh, below uh, these are the images of the output results that you get as a result of solving a engineering problem using this finite element methodology so it is one of the most widely applied computer simulation method in engineering without computers this finite element method does not get anywhere and it cannot be used right and it is very closely integrated with cad cam application it is one of the very well proven tested and validated method for simulating any complex practical scenario so the so one of the main advantage of fem is that it can be used to simulate the real life scenario so in case of experimental method you have or in analytical method you have to simplify some or you have to do some assumptions from the real life uh, scenario to uh, convert it into a simple scenario but in finite element method you can exactly apply the real life conditions to the problem and test the uh, given uh, problem so that you can find the results so you can exactly find how the product or the problem will behave in the real life scenario it can be simulated very much well with the help of the computers so that's what we are going to see so what is the applications of fpm in engineering as i told you it is not only confined to mechanical it case is applied in civil engineering so there will be see you can find it here the, the bridges uh, bridges and various structures that the civil engineers build they use fpm to solve their problems in real life condition so when they build a bridge uh, it is going to undergo severe wind loads it is going to take lots of static loads the trucks buses everything is going to go on the bridge and lots of loads are going to build up on the bridge so it uh, you cannot build a prototype of a bridge and you cannot put a wind load and you cannot put a bus and it takes lots of money involved but simply you can just solve it using this fpa methodology and you can find the image here right similarly in electronics circuitry and in aerospace industries and there are lots of different applications so we can find it here in aerospace domain in automotive domain uh, even in biology uh, medical devices see you can find it here right uh, when a kickboxer takes a punch can really really simulate these kind of things also and uh, these are this is a prosthetic leg uh, uh, so someone uh, physically handicapped they'll be using some uh, this kind of uh, plastic legs it can be simulated using this uh, finite element analysis or finite element methodology so there are lots and lots of applications you can find the uh, geological application we can find see a guitar being simulated for the vibrations and see again a biological system a skeleton being analyzed so uh, the uh, applications are endless for this finite element analysis right so the second reflection spot question so think and write what do you think are the advantages of using finite element analysis in solving problems in any sector of engineering right uh, so far what i have taught you recall it then try to write down the answer for this question pause the video take two minutes write down the answer in your paper right we'll wait
okay i hope you would have written the answer now we'll see so the main advantages of using finite element analysis is that the cost is highly reduced see when you go for testing and prototyping you have to practically manufacture the product so say for example if you are testing this uh, wrench right so uh, spanner or a wrench if you are trying to uh, uh, pro produce this one you have to make a sample of it you have to do a lots of testing in this spanner and only then you can go for the final assembly it takes lots of cost and uh, money is involved right in case of APA see this is you can just find the results like this so where the stresses are involved what are the uh, forces various forces acting on the stresses right you can just use computers within a matter of seconds fraction of seconds you can just solve this problem right so the design cycle time is lesser so the cost is less the time required to analyze it is less and the number of prototypes you do not go for lots and lots of prototypes you just can simulate only one spanner in the computer you can with the help of that results you can directly go for manufacturing you do not go for multiple prototyping right and uh, testing so testing is highly reduced in this case you can uh, just use the help of computers and this finite element method to solve this real life problem and design optimization this is one of the peculiar field or a particular field in finite element analysis so you can find what is design optimization using these three images right i'll get it into it just little bit deeper right so this is an example for design optimization right uh, uh, back in our uh, uh, grandmothers or uh, grandfathers days you can find these kinds of uh, chair fitted with wires so what we did is that we replaced this chair with this solid wooden chair right now again what we are trying to do is that we are converting this chair to this one so this is called as design optimization we are trying to reduce the material usage in a particular application if you reduce the material usage the cost is also going to come down drastically so here in this solid wooden chair there are a lot a lot material lot of material is used to make up this chair and when you convert this same chair to this like uh, putting a lot and lots of coal holes in this chair but still the chair is not going to fail but the material usage when compared with this chair it is going to get reduced so that you can uh, use this chair uh, very well enough and the cost of this chair is very much less when compared with this chair so this can be compared with the earlier chair of a uh, with wires right so this is equivalent but instead of wires we are using the material to create that wired pattern and trying to reduce the material in a way to reduce the cost so this is called as design optimization this can also be simulated using fea so this is a software which is called as altair solid thinking where you try to simulate this solid chair so you finally get a result like this when you do some tweaking small, 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 some small corrections your final output chair would be like this right so this is called as topology design optimization a particular field in finite element analysis so again this is all also involves uh, finite element analysis right okay now what are the different types of analysis that can be performed in uh, fea using fea right uh, the structural analysis thermal cfd fatigue crash impact so there is no such analysis that cannot be performed using fea there is not uh, no such thing like that right whatever you need whatever the type of analysis you can definitely perform using fea right so that's what uh, has been shown here so uh, basically these types of analysis they are particular to mechanical but also not uh, but it does not confine uh, here right you can also go for electronics so in, even in electronics you will be requiring this cfd and thermal analysis in a where uh, the a circuitry which gets heated up and you need to know how much amount of heat has to be dissipated then you go for this thermal analysis in electronics so electrical in a motor uh, you must uh, be providing the proper housing design so then you can go for this uh, structural analysis so uh, this fea this is a broad field which can be used in any department right okay so fea it is a mathematical tool uh, it is integrated with certain software packages uh, which are current, uh, commercially available now you can use that those software packages to solve your problem so these are some of the softwares which are available in market uh, which have been built upon the concept of FEA to solve real life engineering problems. So any FEA, so any FEA software, so these are all the FEA softwares, but all these softwares may be different in their loops, their uh, uh, graphic user uh, interface, their menus and options, but the basic principle with which all these software solve any engineering problem is similar in each case that every software is going to use the basic concept of finite element analysis so these are ansys uh, abacus simulia hypo these are some of the gens in uh, fea softwares right and creating fea 
softwares you can use any software package you want right okay now how to solve an engineering problem using an FEA software right so we'll see step by step so this is called uh, these are the initial steps that has to be that has to be performed by any person right first the definition of the problem so that you need to know so whether you are going to solve a thermal problem or a structural or a dynamics that you need to know and uh, then the element selection then defining material property and section properties then you are going to model your problem so this is similar to that of uh, prototyping in a uh, uh, design process and then you are going to mesh the problem so the basic concept of FEA is that when you have a large problem when you have a problem and if it is very large then you find it very uh, very discomforting right uh, but when the problem is very small then you find it very easier so what we are going to do in FEA is that you are going to convert the large problem into a multiple sets of smaller problems you are going to divide the larger problem into smaller number of elements which is called as meshing so meshing is basically dividing the given problem into finite number of smaller elements it may be say it may be 100 it may be 1000 it may be 2000 1 lakh 2 lakh 1 crore it does not matter but even if you go for 2 crore it is a finite number right so you are going to convert the given problem you are going to divide the given problem into smaller number of elements then you are going to take one such small element you are going to solve that one smaller element and the results of the smaller element can be applied to the total larger problem so this is the basic idea of finite element analysis so this is the series of steps that you will be uh, under uh, doing in any FEA software so this is then you will be solving the problem so here this step requires the use of computer so far in this all these green color steps you can do it manually so this does not take much time you will be you can do this uh, within uh, half an hour or uh, 15 minutes or even 5 minutes it depends upon the problem but these are green color represents what you have to do manually in computer this solution it takes large time right so that's why FEA was not popular be, uh, before 1980s because this solution has also to also to be done manually which uh, takes lots and lots of time but after the invention of computers this step was taken over by the computers and computers solve the problem within fraction of seconds which a human takes around two or three hours uh, the computers solve the problems within five seconds or within even milliseconds uh, the computer solve the given problem so this solution is peculiar to computer so to solve the given problem right then after the computer solves the problem it gives you the results so you have to see the results you have to find what is the value with those value you can uh, uh, you can uh, just infer whether my problem has uh, sustained my uh, conditions or whether my product has failed the given uh, condition you can find and finally you can go for some conclusion and observation and you can make uh, suggestions and suitable recommendations for design changes if it is required so this is so this step is called as pre-processing uh, this is called a solution or processing and the third one is called as post-processing so, so the majority of the human work is involved in this pre-processing solution it is taken over by the computers and post-processing you are just going to see the results and you are going to give the suitable recommendations right so i'll just show you one video on which how a, a product is being uh, analyzed using computers using the concept of this fea in a software called as ANSYS so uh, this is ANSYS uh, software uh, so this is a fidget spinner uh, gear spinner you can uh, find it in the market recently this is uh, one of our stress busters right so before this manufacturing of this uh, fidget gear spinner how it is being analyzed so we'll see the short video on what happens right see this is the results that we get out of finite element analysis so these are the values so this is the def uh, deformation values in terms of mm we can find uh, this concept right so this is the result so this is the solution that you get out of solving a problem you know uh, FEA. so FEA is one of a uh, peculiar thing where you can find colorful images at the end so that is one of the uh, advantages or uh, it, can, it can be uh, said to be some uh, colorful images you uh, eye grasping images right at the end uh, it gives you some satisfaction that I have solved some problem but colors can be deceiving in FEA don't look at the colors rather look at the values uh, that has been uh, behind the uh, results right so don't go just by seeing the colors don't say oh my product has been uh, successful or uh, unsuccessful just go for these values the, these values are the things that say whether your father, uh, product has sustained the real life conditions or it has failed right so this is some analysis that has been carried out using 
uh, finite element analysis. You can find lots and lots of information about this finite element analysis. Uh, so the evolution of computers, uh, the finite element is also evolving with each and every uh, step and you can find uh, in recent days this finite element analysis has taken over the entire industry. So name the industry, you can always find this finite element software in any industry. It uh, simplifies their manufacturing, it simplifies the uh, uh, need to produce uh, any crop, uh, any kind of uh, given product is very easier using this finite element analysis, right? So I think I have given you some short overview on this finite element analysis. I just uh, just made some spray on this finite element analysis. There is lots and lots of uh, uh, thing more to learn. I hope uh, we'll see uh, in the upcoming video. So finally, uh, this is Yashankar, and you can uh, also always follow me in my website so this is my website actually basically right I'll show you uh, shankartc.wordpress.com so this is me you can follow me here you can find my videos and in my youtube channel so I have posted it here you can find it always here right so thank you see you on another wonderful video to explain some other interesting concepts so thank you so much